hello everyone welcome back to the next video in this video i will show you how to create ios widgets in expo react native and uh, we will be sharing state from our application to our widget uh, so that you get a better idea of uh, why basically we will be using widgets we will be making a simple application like a t intake uh, count uh, we will have one button as soon as we click on the button the account will in keep on increments incrementing the count value we will be saving it inside user defaults i will explain you why once i show you guys the code why we are saving it inside user defaults and not inside a sync storage uh, if you want you can uh, instead of user defaults you can use something like uh, swift data or core data or save it on your server as well but just for simplicity sake i'm using the user defaults which helps us to store key value kind of data and same data we will be sharing to our uh, widget as well so we can either update the calorie t intake sorry uh, from our widget or from our application so let's get started right so first uh, we need to go to this particular url uh, to create an expo react native project now there are different templates for creating this projects so we will be using this blank typescript template so i will be uh, just copying this particular uh, uh, like uh, command to create expo react native project using this blank typescript template the advantage is that it is has very less boilerplate code and it also has typescript support that's why i'm using it now we need to give our app some name so it will ask us for an app name i'll just give it give it as my app you can name it whatever you feel like so let it do its thing uh, in the the next step which we need to follow is we'll just have to go to this particular url and just open it in a new tab uh, so first we need to go to the android device uh, go to de select development build i have disabled yes because we will be building it locally then select mac os i have already installed this command i have already installed this i have already installed this i have already installed android studio and i have already done all the required setup which is necessary for uh, which is mentioned in the documentation uh, okay then i have already set this android home path as well and I've also set this uh, Z shell or environment variables inside our shell. Then we need to run this particular command. So I'll just copy it. And here we'll have to CD to our app. So our app has finished installing. I'll run this command. So let's just wait uh, for this to finish. Uh, in the meantime, what we can do is we'll just scroll down and copy this command as well. So this will basically help us to create the uh, Android folder for us. Uh, so this will actually create the uh, native android code which is necessary so i'll just copy this command and paste it again this will uh, run some things and it will create the android folder for us so don't worry too much about it uh, okay so that's it for the android part then you will have to go to the ios device part again select development build here you can disable des i have already installed xcode as well i have already installed xcode command line tools as well i have already installed watchman uh, we have already ran this command uh, so we don't need to run it again if you want you can run it and then we need to run this particular command so i'll just copy this uh, so here you can see uh, like before i uh, run this particular command here you can see for that android command which we ran i get this error now this is not really an error it is because uh, i don't have an android emulator installed and i have not connected my real android device that's why it is throwing me this error uh, it's not really an error uh, in your case it might be uh, might have selected the uh, android emulator whichever you have installed or a real device if you have connected it to your uh, laptop uh, but yeah we don't need to run it again you can just do Control c uh, to dismiss this because we haven't written any code so no point in running it again same thing happen same thing will happen for ios as well but for ios have do have a simulator installed uh, any which ways we are not going to test it on an uh, emulator or a simulator i'll test it on a real device then i'll just paste this command now this will take a little bit of time to run because it needs to uh, do all the coco pod installation as well so let it do its thing in the meantime what i want to show it to you is this particular docs so this will help us to create the uh, native modules for us in which we will be writing all the required necessary code so here is the uh, this is how we add a new module but we'll need to wait for this ios command to finish so let it finish then i'll come back and show it show the next steps to you okay uh, so here you can see it is asking me to run it on a simulator i won't run it i'll just press ctrl c uh, then like i mentioned we need to copy this command and paste it over here now this will ask us few questions like what should be our module name and all that stuff i'll keep everything as default and just press enter 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 and let it do its thing now given that uh, we have 
install uh, this particular module uh, for ios we again need to run this pod installation command for our module as well so just go this and just paste this command as well uh, again now let it do its thing this is just a cheat sheet which i have created so don't get too confused again this will take a bit of time uh, so let it do its thing here you can see it is installing that module so what i will do now is i'll just remove this okay i'll just open our project so i'll just go so here is my project now what i'll do is i will uh, write down all the necessary code come back and then explain it to you uh, and show you guys the output as well okay so uh, before i show you guys the code the next thing which you have to do is you will have to go to your project so here is my project go to ios and you will have to double click on this dot xe workspace file it will automatically open it for you in xcode as you can see i have already opened it then what you'll have to do is just go to your app go to uh, sign in and capabilities uh, here you can just select your team uh, i'm running it on a simulator so it doesn't really matter for me and here i'll just change the bundle identifier to something like this Typical, like typically bundle identifier is com dot your company name dot your app name so i'll keep keeping things simple but uh, i'll just select this team id as well uh, then uh, this bundle identifier is very important because we need to add something called app groups uh, now we require app groups because uh, what i will be doing inside our widget is uh, i will be sharing state from our application to our widget so i will be displaying one counter uh, which have like uh, suppose a t intake counter during the entire day so i have i will have one button inside our application and as soon as you click on it it will increment the counter and the value is saved inside user defaults now user defaults is an ios specific api which is used to store key value data now you might be thinking why are we not using async storage the reason is because we need async storage i'm not really sure what the, it uses behind the scene maybe it uses user defaults i'm not really sure about it but the advantage of using writing native code with user defaults is i can share that state with our widget as well so suppose the value i have clicked the button 10 times inside our app now i cre create a widget the value should be 10 when i created the widget so the count should be 10 inside my widget as well so i can easily share states that's why i'm using user defaults and for that we need, need to create app groups as well uh, so i'll just click on this plus capability button i'll search for app groups i'll uh, click on enter and it has created the app group i'll click on this plus button and here you will have to paste your bundle identifier so it will be group dot your bundle identifier i'll click on ok then uh, you will also need to go to click on file now we need to create our widget as well new uh, file new i think it is project uh, no not project sorry about this uh, i'll just click on cancel it is file new even i for uh, yeah target i guess yeah target so here inside target you will have to select ios and here you will have to search for widget so widget extension click on next now you can give it whatever name you feel like i'll just give it as my expo widget it's up to you what name you want to give it and here you can just select include control as well as include configuration app intent and yeah everything remains the same uh, you can uncheck this include live activity that is not necessary that we don't require it and then i'll click on finish and then we have to click on this activate as well then here we are inside our widget extension so here i'll just change this back to our app uh, okay uh, then here as you can see if you click on your app we have created the app group now same app group we need to create it on our, our widget extension as well so here is our widget extension i'll click on this plus capability button and i'll uh, search for app groups i'll click on enter i'll click on this plus button again again i'll just paste my uh, bundle identifier don't paste your bundle identifier of your widget so if in if you see in your widget it has also appended the uh, your widget name to the bundle identifier this is only for your widget but while creating the app group don't uh, append your widget name to your bundle identifier as well it will be normal bundle identifier okay so this is done as well okay so i have written down all the code which is necessary so first what you will have to do is uh, you will have again ignore this android part we are only concentrating on ios 
so here is our src inside that you will have to go to my module.ts and here i have created two methods one is for save value second is for get value so i'm just either saving the value which will increment the current value by one and get value will get the value whatever is stored inside user defaults okay so these two methods i have created these three things were present by default i have not touched anything so only these two methods i have created now how to use it first go to app.tsx here you can see i have just imported touchable opacity i have imported our module i have also imported use state and use effect from react then uh, here i have created one state for uh, getting the value and as soon as our app is launched i'm getting the value so if there is no value then value will be zero if there is some value we will just get the value and uh, update our state to it and here is our button so inside our button uh, we just do my module dot save value and it will increment the value as well as it returns the value back and then again i'm updating the state and here i have uh, just one text uh, widget just to display whatever is the current value okay so pretty simple on app.tsx side next you will have to go to my module dot swift and here uh, all i have done is that i have just created one key uh, so like I told you right we are using user defaults for storing key value data so we require a key name so I'm using it as stored number it can be anything but do remember this name because we will be using this name in lot other places as well so yeah whatever name you use be consistent with that so this is the key name which I have added rest everything is present by default I have not done anything so here I have created our get value method so here you can see we are using user defaults dot and we are using suit name if you have little bit knowledge of native ios some of you might be wondering why we are not using user defaults dot standard because user defaults dot standard does not allow us to share data with uh, widget uh, that's why we are using user default suit name and here we are passing the app group which we had created then we get the current value which is present inside our user defaults if there is no value we return zero otherwise whatever is the current value we return it back then here is our save value method so here we create our user defaults we pass the suit name again and here is our current value as well so whatever is the current value we increment it by one and save it back to user defaults and return the new value back in case if there is any error i'm just returning back zero so these are the two functions which we have created okay now let's move on to xcode next because we need to write some uh, i mean uh, it's better to use xcode because the entire uh, thing which you see over here so this is our x uh, widget right so you will have to first go to my expo widget okay let's just wait i'll just uh, dismiss this okay so here we will have to write the actual code uh, to get our uh, value from user defaults as well as one button to increment that particular value as well okay so what we need to do is first we need to add this import app indents which i will tell you why we do this then we again need to define the same key which we have defined it previously so user defaults key is equal to stored number then uh, all you need to do is just scroll down and here we will add one method so i'll just paste it so here is a get value method which will basically help us to fetch the value from user default so this is the same code which we have added it inside our native ios just be careful that this should be your own suit name so we get the user defaults value then we convert it like we get the integer value and we return it back otherwise we return zero next uh, here inside this simple entry we need to define one more parameter which will be value in our case so the value is in form of string right so that's what i'm doing over here so let value equal to int now here you will get error so here we need to uh, satisfy this so here we just pass this value attribute which we have added extra and to get the value we will call the get value method which we have defined so i'll just do it like this so same thing again i'll just copy this and i'll paste it over here as well and for this particular thing we don't require an array so we can simplify it even further what i can do is i can just comment this entire thing out okay and i'll comment this particular thing out as well and i'll write my uh, so we have to return a timeline but i'll write it in a more simplified way over here i'll just copy this bit of code uh, so here you can see that we are using the same thing return timeline entries and here I will just pass this particular array so it takes an array so I'm passing the simple entry for date I'm just passing it whatever is the current date 
for configuration whatever is the configuration we which we get over here we are passing it and for value we are passing get value and for policy it is basically like after how much time you want your widget to get updated typically uh, so suppose i have um, uh, suppose the value is 10 inside our widget as well as inside our application now i increase increase the value by one inside our application now i want that value to get reflected on our widget as well right so like as far as i know it's not possible to immediately update your widget without any interaction on your widget itself uh, if you have done the interaction on your app so here we are specifying the minimum amount of time i think this is five minutes do not make this less than five minutes as far as i know this might i might change in future as well apple might decide to change it but uh, like due to uh, avoid draining the user's battery we have to say, set at least this as five minutes so that's what we are doing it over here okay then if you again scroll down here also we are getting this error now this is just a preview part so we can easily comment this out so no big deal then how we want our widget to look so in my case this time and favorite emoji does not make any sense so i'll just comment this particular thing out okay and the next thing which we need to do is i'll just paste this code over here so here i have this text element which will display the value which is present inside our uh, user defaults okay and here i have one button which will help us to increment the value from our widget as well now here it is giving me an error we can't use something called action inside our button for a widget we have to use something called intents that's why at the very top we have in, uh, imported app intents now we need to create a separate struct for this increment intent as well it fo follows a basic boilerplate code so what i'll do is i'll just scroll down at the bottom of the file and write the code for increment intent as well so over here i'll just paste the code so here is our increment intent which extends from app intent again i'm using the same key which we have defined previously this title can be anything like maybe tracking coffee intake or whatever you feel like is correct for you and we have to override this particular method from our app intent uh, so over here again this particular method will get called as soon as our button is clicked so i'm using the same code which we have defined previously so we are getting hold of our user defaults we get the value out of it we increment it by one and we set it inside our user defaults and to return back we just do return dot result because this is an async operation but in our case this is a synchronous operation so we just do return dot result so yeah i think that should be it now let's run our application and see see the output okay so here is the output i have the app running so i'll just click on this dismiss this i'll click on this update button here you can see it is simple so we are just update updating the count now the count is six i'll just dismiss this i'll, I'll long press on this i'll click on edit home screen i'll click on edit over here i'll click on add widget i'll just search for my app now if you're like me testing on simulator sometimes it does take a bit of time to reflect your app so i'll just select my app my app and here you can see it is all, 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 like automatically display always like sorry it is already displaying our count as well as the increment value so here you can select what uh, widget you feel like i'll just select the second one i think that looks a better i'll click on add widget i'll click on done now here i will just increment this value and here you can see the value has changed to seven the value has changed to it now what if i open the app again now i have not completely closed the app the app is still in background it is still showing six now the reason why it is still showing six is because i'm only updating the count inside use effect so use effect is not called there is something called app did come in foreground there is kind of like a event listener in react native which you can use to automatically update the count but if i click on this update count i think it will directly jump the value to nine because the currently the value is eight so if i update here you can see the value has jumped to nine now here the value is nine yeah i it is not automatically updating inside our widget like i told you you will have to wait for at least five minutes before and the os will do it automatically for us we don't have to worry about it if you know a better way do let me know in the comments but now if i click on increment value over here it will directly jump the value to 10 here you can see so yeah that's it thank you for watching bye